Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial for this uh, volume fracturing animation I've done quite a long time ago. Uh, recently I'm kind of very busy, but uh, due to people's requests, I'm going to do this tutorial. I didn't do this tutorial in the past because the method is not a uh, practically useful as you will see in this tutorial so i'm not sure if you will be able to learn or use it somehow but anyway so let's start so here we are in blender as always i'm going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description uh, basically the principle starts with the volume cube node I talked about this node uh, for several times, but uh, basically this is a very unique node. This is the only volume node in geometry nodes that supports a field socket for now. Any other node, for example, you have a mesh to volume node, you do not have all this kind of diamond shape. This diamond shape means it's a field socket. It means it's working based on the geometry. But where's the geometry? You do not have geometry before. This is because this geometry is being integrated at this resolution. Okay. So it basically means that there are uh, 32 points in this space on the x, y, z axis. So you have all these kind of points inside. And every point is occupying a density of value. Okay. Uh, we will talk about more later. But uh, basically, the idea now is that we are going to cut this volume with the Voronoi texture. So let's just uh, take a Voronoi texture, and uh, I'm just going to take that into the distance to edge mode and uh, usually you can visualize with a grid uh, for example 100 100 you can see this is how distance to edge looks like the black line is the distance of zero okay uh, and by the way you realize that the viewer must contains a geometry to view this diamond shape socket because this is the prerequisite of field function while this volume cube does not contain this geometry because it's integrated inside okay but anyway uh, we're basically just going to take a greater than and plug that into the density so i expect you to see something let's say greater than some value you can see there are some empty space being created just like what we see earlier but this time it's working on volume and let's decrease the scale so that we can see the cut more clearly. So we have this uh, fractured cube. And let's take a value position so that we can control this value better. Okay. Maybe five is enough. And to visualize it better, we are just taking the volume to cube. Uh, no, 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 volume to mesh. Yes, so we have this shape. But uh, this is very ugly. It's uh, almost, uh, it's not really a low poly one, but this is kind of tolerable. Sometimes if you want to get the shape sharper, you can increase the resolution, but this will be very slow. If you take that to 64, it's kind of sharper, but it also makes it slower. If you take that to 100, then it will be even slower. And until there will be a, a moment that your computer cannot really tolerate, then it will be a trouble. So some alternative uh, method I would recommend you to is just to use the smooth position so that you can smooth that better. But sometimes you find that there is a gap which you cannot tolerate. You just try to decrease the value. But decreasing this value also requires the enough amount of resolution for this volume 
So you need to really manage uh, the balance between the resolution and the performance when you are working with this volume cube. Unfortunately, Blender is very slow for this kind of work. Houdini is probably more than 100 times faster than uh, Blender geometry nodes. So this is it. So this is the basic idea and uh, the rest is kind of very simple. As you see that we are using this greater than to manage how much we can actually cut on the shape. So here I'm going to take a directional fold. And I'm going to use the, an empty to work with it. So to better visualize the effect, I mean, is that we can use this uh, directional fold into the density. You can actually see this is working like a boolean. The part without a volume means there is a value of zero, and the part with any geometry means the value is one or more. Okay. So basically, this is the idea. Maybe I can change this empty into a an arrow so that you know how it works. And then of course, you can rotate it. So this is how it works. But this time, what we are going to do is just to use this directional fold to determine the value we are comparing with. So this fold value goes from between 0 to 1. So we remap 0 to 1 to drive it. We know that so we need to cut on 3. So yes, you immediately have this kind of progressing fracturing event happening. And this is good. Uh, what if we want to work for things besides this kind of cube? Then, for example, you want to work with a cylinder. So the first thing you need to do is you need to determine the bounding box. This is like when you're working with any kind of a smoke simulation of Manta flow. Uh, you need to determine a kind of a domain box of it. And uh, we we'll basically use the bounding box to decide this minimum and maximum. But it does not determine the shape yet. So how can we determine the shape? We are going to use a inside volume. No, no, no. It's inside volume. Yes, this is the correct one. And then we basically do a multiplication. Then you see, ta-da. And because this is bound to the bounding box, it means you increase the depth, then you have everything going well. But you encounter this issue of uh, uh, resolution. This means you have to increase the resolution. So this is not a really practically useful because it's very slow due to the limitation of resolution. But you can try to change the parameters until you are satisfied with various things. Okay. So this is just a, a kind of possibility. And this is the inside the volume is basically just a recast node. I talked about the similar kind of concepts in the past, so I'm not going to repeat. And uh, for now, basically, this is yet. Uh, let's decrease. Uh, yes. And uh, we can still drive our empties. You can see this is the fracturing. And then we are going to add the light on the edge of these irons. Basically, we are still going to measure the Voronoi texture and this directional fold. 
So if I view this uh, Voronoi texture, uh, and then we try to do another greater than, and then we can use another directional fold to visualize the compare results of it. Here I'm going to compare with less than and the zero, zero point zero six. Then you can see these are the edges being shown. Can we actually use the same value? Yes, we can use the same value. Or maybe a little bit higher. Multiply. The issue is that uh, if you having anything smaller than this value, then they will be deleted. Basically, we're still going to measure the distance of this Voronoi texture and this uh, directional fold. So knowing that uh, the reason we can generate this fracture is because we're deleting part of the volume that's less than this value. This also means that if you want to generate lights on the edges, we need a, a different comparison. For example, we need to go with the less than, and we visualize that. And immediately you can see this kind of inner edges is shining the light. And you can expand that a little bit, maybe multiply with uh, two. So it shines uh, more light or cover more areas. And if you want it to be affected with directional fold, okay, they are already connected. So you do not need to do anything complex. You just need to use this procedural setup. It's working already. Okay, this is kind of cool. But what if you want to delete that? Then you probably still need the <laughs> different values. Yeah. If you want to delete that, then just duplicate that. And we use a float curve. We take a high amount, low amount. So now if you drive that, you can see you're creating the cuts, but you are also deleting this light when you're going through this float curve. Okay, this is cool. And uh, in order to output this into shadow, we just uh, store name the attribute. And then we can name that as a C. Take a setting material. And I'm going to just, uh, take a emission shader. Go into the shader editor. I take this attribute C. And if I go to the render mode, you can see this is how it looks like. And uh, we may just uh, mix different colors with it. I'm going to take the red color and take the blue color or yellow color, whatever stuff. So now you have this effect. Uh, it kind of looks weird, but you can tweak it, whatever. Okay. So anyway, this is the basic principle. But then how can you fracture them into different pieces? I talked about uh, split to instances recently. You do not uh, really need to do this, but uh, sometimes I think this is easier to understand 
once everything is into the instances. Um, you can follow the tutorials in the past, but basically here I'm going to use the preset. So I have this uh, group to instances. And it requires a group ID. By default, it's already using the mesh island. So you do not need to worry. Let's take a set of position. And then we take a random value. And then we plug that into the offset. Then by scaling this value, you can actually see that they are moving away. Okay. But here I want to warn you that they are moving away only after they are being fractured into multiple pieces with their islands. So during the process, this will be a very horrible, weird, whatever process. This means that you will want to take a direction, a different directional fall with an empty. So you basically can do the same, but you will, you will have this weird issue. So here I'm going to just take a directional offset. You see there is an offset to a kind of a high enough number, maybe negative 30, so that you initially have this kind of a fracturing and only after certain amounts of time, you start to move them. Yes. So maybe I'll just uh, decrease the value. Negative five. Yes. And here I'm just going to remap. Let's take a negative. So that instead of uh, controlling this scale, I can use the this negative value and a positive value to control how much I'm actually moving them. Okay. And basically this is yes. It looks like these two are separate process and that they are separate process. You do not want to combine them together. Otherwise if this directional offset is not enough, sometimes you will have a premature exploding of your geometry. You can see the, the, this one is shaking because the island is not being separated yet. So basically this is it. And uh, if you want to do the rotation, it's basically the same. You have a rotate instances. And uh, you take you can take a random rotation, which is basically doing the same. Uh, let's remap the which one. Maybe 15. Then you have this effect. Yeah, it looks kind of ugly, whatever. And basically this is, yeah. This is not a very complex setup, but it's not really practically useful due to the performance issue, due to this splitting issue, and uh, so on and so forth. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll probably see you next time, bye-bye.